bookshelf tour. So I did previously post a whole series of videos of my dad and me building out these bookshelves. So if you're interested in seeing the process of how these bookshelves were built and then organized, I will link all of those videos down below. But this is the final video in that series because I now have finally finished organizing, decorating, and building the shelves with my dad. So first of all, to give you kind of a, a rundown of the shelves themselves, these shelves actually started as the Ikea Billy bookshelves. And what we did was we made them look like built-ins by framing the bottom of the shelves and the very top of the shelves. Uh, so these are billies, <laughs> but they hopefully look like their own thing. My dad added this custom trim work to kind of fill the gaps between the billy bookshelves and to hide any sort of imperfections, added some of these ornate pieces uh, to, to all of the, the posts that kind of fill in the gaps between the framing and the shelves themselves. We also added some custom molding, so some crown molding on top, and then of course the baseboard molding on the bottom. So it really hopefully looks built in. It looks like this was always a part of this room of the house. For the lights, these lights are actually from Home Depot and he did custom wiring uh, behind the trim of the top part of the shelf and they actually are controlled by this light switch right here that he had put in place. So I can turn them off and on from there. A couple other things to note, the chandelier is also from Home Depot the desk 
is from City Furniture. The chair is from Home Goods. The rug I will link down below. Of course, it is from Rifle Paper Company, who I love. Uh, we did have to figure out a way to kind of hide the cord that offers power to the laptop on the desk because I actually work from home. So this is my office during the day. So this desk does have built-in power, but we had to hide the cord going from the desk to the wall. So you'll kind of see this piece and I'm going to get a nice little box to kind of hide those cords entirely. And I also film in here. So my ring light is always set up as well. I got this chair from Wayfair. I will link it down below. The curtain from Home Goods. It matches the rug, I think, pretty perfectly. And then the art is from an Etsy artist who I will also link down below. So that is an overview of the library. So now I will actually take you through every shelf. And I'm not going to do the style of bookshelf tour where I pull out every single book and tell you the name and the author. I will just point out some either special editions or books I really love or books that are high on my priority list, something where I have a little bit more to say about them. I do have quite a bit of room still left to fill on the shelves, which I love. So you'll see a lot of books are facing out to kind of just hide those gaps right now. Uh, and I love that I have room to continue to grow the collection in terms of how many books I have. I'm estimating right now, but I think it is about 600 books in this library and I haven't read about maybe 150 of them. So by far the, the majority of these have been read and I try to continuously unhaul books that I don't love, uh, that don't spark joy for me, that I'm not going to reread and I bring in new books. Uh, so that is why I have kind of a collection now of quite a few unread books. So hopefully the books that I have read in this library are all books that I've at least enjoyed to a certain extent. They may not be favorites, but I've definitely enjoyed them and have the potential of rereading in the future. So I'm gonna stop talking and we're going to start at the top because that's gonna be the hardest to film. <laughs> and we will work our way around the entire room. All right, so we are going to start at my young adult and my middle grade shelf, which is on the side of the room. And we will start at the very top right there. So I obviously don't have too much to say about this shelf because it is the Sarah J Mass shelf. I like the Throne of Glass series. I really enjoyed the first book in Crescent City and I really enjoyed the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I am not necessarily the biggest Sarah J Maas fangirl, but I did enjoy several of her books a lot. I would eventually love to upgrade my Throne of Glass editions to the newer ones that were just released. I don't love the old covers, but they are quite nostalgic and, and classic feeling. So that is the Sarah J Maas shelf. Moving down, we have my YA sci-fi shelf. So a couple notable books here. First of all, I have A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray being displayed because I think that that YA sci-fi series is so underrated. It is parallel universes and it is so cool how it's all done. I love that series. And then the one right next to it, Scythe one of my favorite series. I absolutely love Scythe. The only one on here I haven't read yet is The Infinity Quartz. I would love to read that one soon, but I really enjoyed all of these YA sci-fi series. And then moving down again, another mostly YA sci-fi, also some dystopian and of course the Aragon series, which is fantasy, but I thought the colors all kind of coordinated really well for this shelf. Obviously, the standouts here are going to be the Patrick Ness Chaos Walking Trilogy. I love The Knife of Never Letting Go, and that whole trilogy is just one of my favorites. Uh, the Illuminae 
files. I really enjoyed the first two books especially. And of course, The Giver. I do have the entire Giver Quartet. I've read them all, but The Giver is by far my favorite in that series. So all of these have been read. All of these I really, really enjoyed. And then the next shelf, we are now fully into YA fantasy. So this shelf is a nice mix of books I haven't read and books I have. Uh, notably, Strange the Dreamer that's being displayed. That is the Owl Crate edition of the duology and I absolutely love these editions. Let me show you. They have the gorgeous sprayed edge and end papers. And then underneath the dust jacket is just gorgeous. So I love, love these editions. This is a great duology that I really enjoyed. And then for the diviners, I haven't yet read this series but this was from fairy loot and i think that these editions are just stunning again they have sprayed edges and the cool details on the inside so loved being able to get those still need to read them and then this one i haven't read yet but <laughs> the cover is so striking that i just had to grab it i was so intrigued by this cover so I'm very curious to check out that one and see what it's all about. But of the ones I have read, I would say A Curse So Dark and Lonely is a blast. Legendborn, Kingdom of Souls is so, so good. I really enjoyed this first book and still have to continue on. So there are a lot of good books on here, ones I'm highly anticipating and ones that I really enjoyed. Next is once again, some more YA fantasy. I have read almost all of these on this shelf. Uh, the only couple I haven't read are Graceling and The Scorpio Races, uh, but all the rest have been read. Uh, the Raven Boys, these are actually alternate dust jackets from the bookish box, which I really love because I don't love the original covers for this series. Uh, I do love the Infernal Devices trilogy and I actually used to have the Mortal Instruments and unhauled it, but I had to keep the Infernal Devices. It was so good. And then, of course, I love the Young Elites, the Rose Society, and this Fireborn, the Aurelian Cycle, is amazing. So some that I absolutely love on this shelf, some are absolute favorites. The Raven Boys, in particular, that series is one of my favorites. So love, love this shelf. And then moving on down, we've got my Lee Bardugo shelf, my Grishaverse slash Ninth House shelf. So this is one that I am planning on getting some more Lee Bardugo. Uh, I would love to maybe potentially get some special editions since I absolutely love the Grishaverse. I love the Shadow and Bone trilogy, love Six of Crows. Ninth House was not my absolute favorite, but I need to reread it, and I do plan on continuing on with that series. And then I have this candle. I actually found the candle stand from Goodwill and thought just the the aesthetic of the candle really matched kind of these darker books. I think it looks really cool. So this is a, a favorite shelf of mine. Definitely want to grow the Lee Bardugo collection even more. And then finally, we have my middle grade shelf. So this is also a collection I would love to grow and continue to collect more middle grade. Uh, I have read almost all of these books, except for The Girl Who Drank the Moon and Gregor the Overlander. But all of the series of unfortunate events, those were actually passed along to me as a gift, and I love them. I think that they are so clever. Nevermore is a really fun series. It's not a favorite for me, but I do really enjoy it. And then Amari, I absolutely love. That is one of my favorite middle grades for sure. So that is why it is displayed and I can't wait for more books in that series. So yeah, this is my middle grade shelf. Maybe it will eventually get a little bit larger. All right, so the next shelf we'll go over is my corner shelf. And this just has a hodgepodge of different genres. We'll just, we'll go through it together. At the very top here is the Barnes & Noble collectible editions that I have for the children's collections. And some of these, I don't know if they can be considered 
children's books per se, like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but some of them are. So we kind of just keep all of them here. I, I love these editions. I think they're absolutely stunning. Uh, I love collecting them. These are ones that I don't feel like I have to read right away. It's more of just the collector in me wanting to make sure I'm able to collect them if they were, you know, ever to go out of print or anything like that. So those are these editions. Then moving down, we've got a combination of my Discworld Death Collection and then my Penguin Cloth Bound. So I am starting to kind of work up this particular collection. And my rule for myself is I have to have read the classic before I'm allowed to buy the cloth bound edition for it. <laughs> the only exception is A Christmas Carol. I found this one used at a local bookstore and just had to grab it. It was too good of a deal. So that's why this collection is so small. I still need to really catch up on some of my classic reading. And then of course the Discworld cloth bound editions. I love these and I'm working my way through the death collection. I have Hogfather and Thief of Time left. And the next series I'm going to try in Discworld is going to be the, oh, what's it called? It starts with Guards Guards. That's the one, oh, City Watch. That's the one I want to get to next. And I'd love to continue collecting these because I think they're such cool additions. I mean, you can see the, the cover is printed right there on the hardback. So I love these. So this shelf is, you know, small, but we'll we'll build it up <laughs> slowly over time. The next shelf I have here are special edition books with just absolutely stunning sprayed edges. I love these sprayed edges and then a candle. Uh, so I got to show some of these off. They're so beautiful. So this is all mostly fairy loot and Goldsboro. So I have the fairy loot edition of the Very Secret Society of the Regular Witches. Emily Wild, which I didn't love, but that's okay. Spells for Forgetting, which I did really enjoy. Same with A Dowry of Blood. Loved that one. Have not read Book of Eve yet, but that is a stunning, stunning book. And then I actually just got this one in the mail, The Dead Romantics. Look, those might be my favorite sprayed edges. I think they are stunning. I love the colors. Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, I didn't love, but it does have cool sprayed edges. <laughs> and then these two are from Goldsboro, and I have not yet read them, but The Witch and the Tsar has stunning sprayed edges. And then finally, Shield Maiden. So those are all of the special edition cool sprayed edges books. And we'll kind of just keep adding to it as I, as I get cool editions. I, I love that shelf. Then we have my Lord of the Rings shelf. Uh, these dust jackets are alternate dust jackets from a company called Nerdy Ink that I will link down below. So I have my classic paperback editions that I actually read the story out of and then the amazing alternate dust jackets. I just think the art on this is so stunning. So I, I love that. We've got my His Dark Materials editions and I I, I don't love this series. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. It's it's okay, it's fine. But these editions are just some of my favorite covers that I own. I love them so much. So I had to display them. I think they're stunning. So that's that shelf. Then we've got my Asian inspired fantasy shelf, which I'd love to continue to build up. So the Shadow of the Fox trilogy, I, I didn't have enough room to put the third book. So it's kind of bothering me, but We'll make it work. Uh, Shout out the Fox trilogy. I love, love. And then some of these other books, The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, Six Crimson Cranes, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, I didn't love, but their covers are just so beautiful. This is the only one I haven't read yet. Uh, and Elle, Elle actually sent me her copy. Thank you, Elle. <laughs> it's the gorgeous Waterstones edition. I love, love that. Uh, but I have to just show you these other covers. Look. At that. I can't get rid of it. I just can't. Same with Six Crimson Cranes. I just can't get rid of it. And and same with Daughter of the Moon Goddess. It's it's a problem. I, I love these covers way too much. They are just absolute masterpieces, works of art. So I love having them in my collection, even though I didn't love the book itself. 
And then finally we have my comic books, my manga, and my graphic novels. And this is a pretty small collection so far, uh, but I'd love to continue to build it up. Uh, I have read the the two full medals that I have and the, the Sailor Moons, all the sagas. So I, I have to keep building this collection. It's just so expensive to buy graphic novels and I go through them so quick that it's it's hard to justify sometimes paying the amount I do. Uh, I know I can borrow them, so maybe I just need to start doing that. But I do want to build up this collection over time, especially Saga and Full Metal Alchemist. I really would love to continue in those two. Next shelf over is going to be getting into my adult fantasy and my sci-fi. And then we also have more classics editions up above. So let's go through it. So starting at the top here, this is again the continuation of my Barnes & Noble collectible editions. So of these, I've only read from the Jurassic Park and the Agatha Christie uh, collections. Oh, also Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I've read a Jane Austen novel from that edition. Uh, but the rest are all still to be read. All of these, I, I just absolutely love these editions and have my whole life to read them. So I'm very excited to eventually get to them. Um, but again, I'm in no rush. These are just making the collector heart in me very happy. <laughs> and moving along, this is the first of my two sci-fi shelves. And I have this little astronaut bookend that was so kindly sent to me that I absolutely love. I'll link it down below. There's a good mix here of books I have read and haven't read. Uh, the standout for me, on this shelf is some of the Octavia Butler books I've read. I loved Wild Seed and Mind of My Mind, and I also loved Ready Player One. Those are some favorites of mine. I thought A Memory Called Empire was great, Dead Silence was great, so there's a lot of good ones on here and still some to be read for sure. And then moving down, we've got my second sci-fi shelf. And this is the one where I have read the majority of these. This has some of my favorite sci-fi books on it, particularly Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This Themis Files trilogy, I love the first two books. The third book was fine. It was okay. Uh, the Martian, Project Hail Mary, those two are some of my favorite books of all time. Uh, the Oracle Year was such a blast, so this has some favorites for sure. These editions here are from The Broken Binding, and they are actually the Children of Time trilogies. So Children of Time is a book I've heard so, so much about. I love Adrian Tchaikovsky's Guns of the Dawn, so I definitely wanted to read more by him, and I just thought these sprayed edges were some of the most beautiful I had ever seen, so I had to grab them. Uh, and I definitely plan on reading this trilogy hopefully soon, but I thought that the edges looked so cool on the sci-fi shelf. So those are all of my sci-fi books. Moving down, we've got some favorite fantasies here. The Anti Darken trilogy, this one here, is young adult. I did not have any room for it on my young adult shelves. It just did not look good anywhere except here. So here it is, but the rest are all adult fantasy. Guns of the Dawn, again, is one of my favorites of all time. I just finished the Great Coat series. That has now become a favorite series for me. I love, love that series. And then of course we've got a candle here. I really like this candle and my Robert Jackson Bennett collection. I really enjoyed the Divine Cities trilogy. Love Foundry Side and Shorefall. Lachlan's was fine, a little disappointing, but I still have such a fondness for both of these series. So this is a favorite shelf for sure. And then moving down to my V.E. Schwab shelf. So this is again, one that I would love to grow my collection for. Uh, I do plan on reading the continuation of the Shades of Magic series when that comes out later this year. Vicious is one of my all-time favorite books. Same with Vengeful. I love that duology. If she ever continues in it, I would love to read more of it. And then I have 
this edition of Invisible Life of Addie LaRue displayed. I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite, but I enjoyed that. Um, so I definitely would love to collect more V.E. Schwab. I really enjoy everything I read by her pretty much, so she's definitely an auto buy author for me. And then moving down to my, what feels like my Orbit shelf. <laughs> All of these, except the Gunslinger, are Orbit fantasy books. <laughs> and they just all look really good together. So I've read several of these, haven't read several of these. All of these books here I need to read. All of these I've read. So the Lightbringer series, I enjoyed that. The Under the Northern Sky trilogy is so fantastic. Uh, I'm about to read Senlin Ascends. And then I do have two arcs here of books I definitely want to prioritize very soon. So this is just all fantasy, adult fantasy, and I, I love it. And then finally, this bottom shelf here is kind of just books where I could not find a better spot for them. <laughs> so there are some arcs here that I do plan on eventually upgrading and get getting finished copies of them. Uh, that I really enjoyed, like The Monsters We Defy and Half a Soul right here and The Book of Gothel. I might, I might not upgrade that one. I don't know yet. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then we've got a couple self-published books that were sent to me and that I really loved. Uh, so this is kind of just a, a hodgepodge, <laughs> but I definitely uh, eventually want to finish out this shelf, do something a little bit more with it. A couple of standouts on this shelf. Um, I have to give a shout out to Winds of Strife by UG Gutman because this book was awesome. It was a debut self-published fantasy that was so kindly sent to me by the author and I loved it. The magic was so cool in that one. And then Ring Shout is fantastic. One of the only novellas I've really loved. Uh, and then Sword of Kaigen, of course, I loved. The Thunder Heist was so much fun. This was also sent to me by the author and I really enjoyed this one. Nettle and Bone, I loved. And Tigana is probably gonna end up in my next unhaul. So <laughs> that is the shelf. All right, and now moving on to the middle shelf. We'll start at the top. So starting at the top here, again, I have the Barnes & Noble collectible editions. These are the rest of them that I have in this particular size. And then the Harry Potter illustrated editions. And then moving on down, I have got my UK edition Brandon Sanderson shelf. <laughs> so I originally started collecting all of the Stormlight books in the split editions, so I am awaiting my Rhythm of War editions that should be coming in soon, uh, and that is how I like to read the Stormlight books. It makes it a little less intimidating, and I do still need to read Elantris. I do have Warbreaker. My husband's reading it right now, so that is why that is missing. And then I've got the entire Mistborn series. I need to get the Lost Metal edition to match. Uh, it's so much larger and I, I just did not want to put it on the shelf when it just looks so odd <laughs> next to the rest of them. Uh, so that is my Brandon Sanderson shelf. Moving on down is my second Brandon Sanderson shelf and these are the U.S. hardcover editions with the alternate dust jackets that I will link down below. They were actually so kindly sent to me by Jashana, whose channel I will link down below, uh, which was so nice of her to send this to me. And then Tress of the Emerald Sea we've got, which I loved. The Skyward series in the UK hardcover editions. I still need to read Skyward Flight. And then I also have a photo of my grandfather because he has passed away, but the money that he left me was used to build this library. So I've dedicated this library to him. So it's very special to, to have him here. <laughs> and then moving on down, we've got one of my favorite shelves, primarily because it has all of my Michael J. Sullivan books on it, which I love. This is 
Legends of the First Empire, my favorite fantasy series so far. I mean, nothing's topped it yet. And this has topped Stormlight, so I love this. I love this series. I love the Ryria Revelations, Priory of the Orange Tree. I still need to read, but it just has one of the most stunning covers ever. Uh, and then I have Nolan, which I still need to read, and Peace and Turmoil by my friend Elle from Elliot Brooks, which I do still need to read. I'm very excited to get to it. And then, of course, we have my little dragon friend here. I had asked a bunch of you uh, in a previous video what to name him, and there were so many amazing suggestions, but I think I'm going to go with Herman. So this is Herman the dragon. He's so cute and little. I love him dearly and I will link where I got him down below. It was just off of Amazon and the seller does a bunch of these dragons. So I definitely want to get more of them. They are just so cute. I love him. So this is Herman and he keeps watch over some of my dragon books. Moving on down, we've got another shelf that I really love. Some really stunning additions here. Uh, I am currently reading Bone Shard War, which is why it is missing from that spot. Uh, but I love, love the, the first book in that series, The Bone Shard Daughter. I really enjoyed the Book of the Ancestor trilogy. This crystal ball was actually a Christmas gift to me from a family member. And I think it is so cool and it looks perfect with this color scheme. So I, I love how that looks. The Final Strife, I love the UK edition here. I still need to read this one. It is so high up on my list. Ruination, I still need to read. And same with The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi. This is the Fairy Loot edition that might be one of the most stunning books I own. It is so beautiful. And then we've got the David Bod trilogy, which I still need to finish the last book in. So love this shelf. It has some really pretty books on it. <laughs> and then moving on down, we've got another Orbit shelf. <laughs> so many Orbit books. Uh, these are the larger Orbit paperback editions. Some of them, some of them are hardcover. Uh, I've got my Faithful in the Fallen set, which is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. Love, love that series. I still need to continue on with A Time of Dread. The Shadow of the Gods has such a cool cover. I need to read it. I've heard great things. The Lycanius trilogy, I need to continue on with. I really enjoyed the first book. The First Law trilogy, I really, really enjoyed. And then Justice of Kings, I still need to read the second book, but I really enjoyed that first book. So lots of great books on here. Some I definitely want to prioritize very soon. And then finally, this last shelf, again, tall orbit paperbacks mostly. <laughs> and all of these, yes, except for maybe one of them, all of these are books that I need to read. I have read Gideon the Ninth, but all the rest of them uh, are definitely high up on my TBR. And I, I really don't know how to prioritize because... They all sound so great. So if you see any favorites on this shelf, let me know. Um, but I definitely need to get to all of these very, very soon. And then we've got the last middle shelf here. So we will just start from the top. Here is the Harry Potter shelf. Uh, those are the alternate dust jackets from Nerdy Ink, the same place I got the Lord of the Rings ones. So I will link that down below if you are interested. And then moving right along, we have all of my Outlander books. I have read all of them. I have not read the latest book. And I don't know if I will. Uh, it's been so long since I've read these books that I don't really have anything like fresh in my head uh, from that series. So I don't know if I'll continue on yet, but I really enjoyed most of them, some of them were very long. <laughs> Spinning Silver, I have the, the stunning UK hardback edition and I have been looking so hard for the Uprooted one to match it because I think Uprooted also has a stunning cover, but it is just so expensive. I can't justify it right now, but 
eventually maybe I will upgrade that uprooted edition and then I've got some Robin Hobb books uh Royal Assassin I did not finish but I am going to still give Robin Hobb another chance with her Live Ship Traders trilogy moving down we've got my mythology retelling books and then just a lot of white fantasy books. Really, really enjoyed Kaikei and Circe and Electra. I still need to read Sister Song. Oh, and Witch's Heart was also great. I still need to read Sister Song and Song of Achilles. And then the Nevernight trilogy is good. It wasn't a favorite, but I, I did enjoy it overall. And then these four I have not read yet. So those are four books that I would also really love to get to very soon. Moving on down, I really, really love this shelf. Uh, it is actually kind of like a, a very whimsical shelf, I would say. So some standouts on this shelf. Uh, actually, most of these books I'm going to want to feature heavily. So I actually just received the Fairy Loot edition of In the Lives of Puppets, and the sprayed edges are just really stunning. I, I think that this edition is absolutely gorgeous and I, I can't wait to read it. I loved the House in the Cerulean Sea. Under the Whispering Door was also good but not quite as good as House in the Cerulean Sea. Oh dear, I forget which edition this Last Hill of Flower Bride is but it is so stunning and when I find it I will link it down below. It has the most gorgeous end papers and the most gorgeous sprayed edges. It came with the original dust jacket, but I loved the naked hardback of this one so much that I'm just displaying it like that. Uh, so this is one of my favorite books of the year so far. So I did splurge and get an additional edition of it, but I also have the fairy loot edition of it, which is also absolutely stunning. And I love the edges here so had to display those edges and then I have the fairy loot editions of the Gilded Wolves trilogy by Roshani Chokshi and then I have this that I found and I thought it matched the last tale of the flower bride so perfectly and it matched the 10,000 doors of January so perfectly that I had to grab it and put it here and I really like how it turned out. So I'm a, I'm a big fan because it feels like it's a door opening to a fantasy world. I, I really like this. Uh, and then I have A River Enchanted, which I think is a stunning cover. I still need to read this one. And then one of my favorite fantasy series of all time, the Winter Night Trilogy. So that is this shelf. I really love this shelf. There's quite a few books I still need to read on it, but I really love how it all kind of came together. Moving down, we have my smaller paperback <laughs> fantasy shelf, uh, most primarily my Game of Thrones editions that I love. I, I don't love the original covers. I think they're very generic, but I love these kind of show tie-in editions that don't look like show tie-in editions. They just look really cool. I love the landscape on them. Then we've got the Ninth Rain trilogy. I need to finish that out with the Poison Song. Got Name of the Wind, Lies of Black Lamora. So this is this is quite a good shelf full of some some great fantasy books. And then moving on down, we've got my RF Kuang shelf and my I, I don't really know, my black and gold shelf, if you will. So over here we've got the Poppy War trilogy, one of my favorites. Love the Poppy War. Uh, this candle here, which is actually LED so I can turn it on and kind of have some ambiance with it and then this edition of Babel was the fairy loot edition and I love sprayed edge so much but I also love just the the front of the cover so I tried to kind of angle it so you could see both and then this edition I don't know that I will need to keep this uh especially if once I read Babel if I don't love it I might end up selling this one but this was the alternate dust jacket um, and I forget exactly where I ordered this from. If I find it, I will link it down below. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful dust jacket, but that's kind of all there is to it. Uh, it actually has the 
original dust jacket right below it. So really cool addition. But again, if I don't love the book, I probably won't feel the need to keep it. Um, and then we've got some, again, some black and gold and, and white <laughs> and gold books uh, that I think just look really good together. Uh, I do still need to read The Queen of the Tearling and Book of Night. This edition of Alone With You in the Ether from Fairy Loot I think is beautiful. I love, love the sprayed edge. And then we've got the Atlas Six, which I did read and I felt very mixed about it. Some of it I enjoyed, some of it not so much. And then I'm going to read The Helm of Midnight this, uh, this month, this month. I'm very excited for that one. So that is the shelf. And then finally, we've got some room to grow down here. Uh, actually, I have read quite a few of these. Uh, Upon a Burning Throne is fantastic. I love that one. Black Sun, fantastic, amazing, five stars. Jade City was great. I can't wait to continue on in that series. I have not read the Mercedes Lackey or the Solace book yet, uh, so I still need to read those. But yes, we have some room to grow, as you can see. Now let's talk about the other corner shelf on the other side of the room. And this is where we are getting into anything not fantasy or sci-fi. So let's talk about it. Starting at the top, we do have a couple of more Barnes and Noble collectible editions. The, these are the flexi bound soft leather editions that I am also collecting. So <laughs> again, I've got quite a few collections going on here, uh, all from Barnes and Noble. They just have very reasonable prices for their editions and I just love the way they look. So I'm gonna keep <laughs> collecting. Moving on down, we've got my Stephen King shelf. Uh, this is a shelf that I would like to continue to expand, especially with these new additions that uh, are coming out in the UK. And I think if you get all of them, they make a huge rainbow uh, using the spine colors. So I love, love how they look together. Uh, I have read all of the Stephen King except for Firestarter and The Institute. Those are the two I own that I do still need to read. Moving on down, we've got Imaginary Friend displayed because if you didn't know, it is my favorite book of all time. I love Imaginary Friend. So that one is very special to me, adult horror. Uh, and then we've got some other ones that I just really, really enjoyed. Uh, Harlan Coben, Runaway is a five-star read. I do still need to read the other one I have from him. The Guest List I really enjoyed. The Passengers I also loved. The Last Word, five stars, so good. And No Exit was amazing as well. So I just really like all of these thrillers slash horror books. <laughs> And then moving on down, we have a historical fiction slash contemporary shelf. I don't really know why these particular books are here. They just all fit. And that was basically it. So I love, love Kristen Hanna. All of her books I've given five stars. I do need to read the other uh, Emma Donahue books I have, but I love Room. That is one of my favorites of all time for sure. And then I loved The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain, so I definitely want to read more from that author. And then I have Violetta, which is a five-star prediction, and I've heard amazing things recently about lessons in chemistry, so I definitely want to prioritize that one. Moving on down... We've got my thriller slash mystery slash horror. <laughs> it's just a hodgepodge. Uh, I have read all of these. Yes, I have read all of these. I think my favorite on this particular shelf has to be Gone Girl and The Road. Those two are amazing, five stars. I also really enjoyed the Millennium trilogy, uh, starting with the girl with the dragon tattoo. So good. And then behind her eyes, I just loved the twist at the end. It was bonkers. <laughs> so another shelf full of books that I really enjoyed. And then moving down, we've got some of my nonfiction books. 
a couple memoirs and some other stuff. Uh, Eric Larson, the, the Devil in the White City right here. This is a fantastic book. Uh, and it's something that I, I never thought I'd be interested in learning about the Chicago World Fair, but I, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And then Atomic Habits is amazing. Just Mercy is amazing. One of my favorites. Educated was fantastic. So I've really enjoyed all of these books that I've read, at least from the ones that I've read. <laughs> and then on the bottom here, again, more historical fiction and other things. <laughs> so notably here, I have read almost all of these except for some of the more classics like Fahrenheit 451 and Catch-22. Uh, I also need to read Chanel Clayton. That is an author I've been really wanting to get to. I have this one edition of Agatha Christie's and then there were none. And I love, love these new editions that are coming out for Agatha Christie's works. I would love to build up my collection. I only have this one <laughs> so far because I found it actually at a used bookstore and I snagged it for a very, very good price, but I would love to keep growing that collection. It's just something that right now I'm not prioritizing with everything else going on. Couple standouts here. I, I just have to give a quick shout out to We Are Water. It is so underrated. I've never heard anyone talk about this book. It is amazing. It is full of content warnings. Like, please, please look up every content warning before going into it. But it is amazing. I love that book. It is a family contemporary drama and it is incredible. All right, last shelf. We are almost done. So this is my everything else shelf <laughs> for lack of a better description. So let's start at the very top. These are every single one of them I've read and every single one of them I would classify as a favorite. They're all incredible. I think the only only exception is a couple of Frederick Bachman books I have not read. So I have not read Brit Marie was here and my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry I did read but I just really need to reread it I don't remember anything about it but those are up there because Frederick Bachman is just a favorite author of mine in general uh, but everything else I've read and everything else is incredible so this is a shelf that I look at and I just smile because I have such fond memories of reading every single one of these. I'll give you The Sun is the one displayed because it is so, so good. I, I love that book so much. So yes, this is, this is a special shelf to me. Moving on down, we've got my book of the month books, as well as a couple of other books that I have read, still need to read. Uh, notably here, The Maid. I love The Maid. That was one of my favorite reads from last year. I also love Somebody's Daughter, as well as The Anomaly, The Unsinkable Greta James, Eleanor Oliphant, How to Walk Away, The Vanishing Half. These two on the end I do still need to read here, but everything else I, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, I do still also need to read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I've heard amazing, amazing things about that book. So. Yeah, couple on here that definitely I, I would love to read soon, uh, but I just really like how colorful this shelf is. <laughs> this is my horror slash thriller shelf. I have Home Before Dark displayed because it's one of my favorites. Uh, and I also absolutely love The Whisper Man, as well as The Sundown Motel, The Book of Cold Cases, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and My Best Friend's Exorcism. Those are my favorites on this shelf. I love them all. Um, but everything I've read on here, I have enjoyed overall, except for maybe The Drift. That will probably be a part of an unhaul in the future. But for now, it can stay around. Moving on down, we've got some more thrillers. So a couple notable ones from this one. A Nearly Normal Family, 
That is such a good thriller. I love that. Jane Harper, I really enjoy her writing in general. So love all of those. Samantha Downing also makes really fun, fast paced thrillers that I really enjoy. The Push is one of my favorites. And Nosferatu is also one of my favorites. So still need to read The Passage as well as Heart Shaped Box. I'm currently reading one by one. And there's a couple others, but for the most part, I really enjoy all of these. Maybe except The Maidens, which I recently read and just was not a big fan of. But, but everything else I, I did enjoy. Moving down, we've got more contemporary mystery, historical fiction, just <laughs> everything. Uh, so a couple, again, of notable books here. The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. Amazing, amazing book. I love that book so much. I also absolutely loved The Art of Racing in the Rain. Little Fires Everywhere was good. Miracle Creek was good. The Final Revival of Opal and Nev was good. But a lot of these I still need to read. So I'm definitely planning on hopefully getting to several of them very soon. Almost there, second to last shelf. Here we go. It is, again, mysteries, thrillers, couple horrors. Finley Donovan is killing it. I enjoyed. I didn't love it, but it's such a fun cover that I just have to have it displayed. The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry was amazing. If it had had an ending, like any ending at all, it would have been five stars, but it didn't. <laughs> so it was four, but it was still so good. I love that book. Uh, I also love Behind Closed Doors. That's one of my favorites. And then The Last Mrs. Parrish over here is one of my favorites, as well as The Cabin at the End of the World. Not one of my favorites, but I really enjoyed it, and I can see why others didn't. <laughs> so a couple on here I still need to read. My Heart is a Chainsaw. I still need to read All's Well. They Never Learn. But overall, really like this shelf. And the plant helps take up some space because, again, I've got quite a bit of room to grow. Last shelf is all my romance. Uh, and a couple of these, you know, are, don't have to be considered romance. They're also, like, more contemporary. And, like, This Is How It Always Is uh, by Lori Frankel right here is not romance. It's more contemporary, but it's incredible. And I love that book so much. It's, again, one of my favorites. Uh, and all of these I have read with the exception of The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren, because I actually just received that one in the mail uh, a couple days ago. So I definitely want to read that because I'm really excited. I really enjoy Christina Lauren. Uh, these three that I own are my favorites. I've read several other books by them, but not ones that I, I love. So I have unhauled some. Um, but overall, do still really love them. Uh, the Love Hypothesis is fantastic. Fix Her Up is one of my favorites. Take a Hint, Danny Brown was awesome. And then the Leanne Moriarty books, my favorite by far is Big Little Lies. Fantastic book. And then I've got quite a few Jojo Moyes, and my favorite by her is The Girl You Left Behind. I think that one is amazing. One plus one is also great. So lots of really awesome books on here. Lots of favorites. All right, so that is the bookshelf tour. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was fun uh, or interesting to watch. Uh, it did take a couple days to film, so you'll notice I'm in a new outfit now. Let me know how you have your own bookshelves organized. Do you organize them in any specific way, like by color or by genre. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and if you want more information about exclusive content from me, like joining a book club or suggesting videos for my channel or books for my TBR, you can check out the link to my Patreon that is down below in the description box. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you all in my next one.